Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. I've developed this very low powered air conditioning system that you can put on your boat. Over the last few videos, we've met a couple and uh, found out that this is a good fit for them. We've installed one on their boat. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to put the refrigerant in and charge it up so it's all up and functioning. So in last week's video, we installed the physical air conditioner in Dave and Kendra's boat. The install went quite well, and I think you can see from that video, that's something that's manageable. That's the part in the installation procedure that takes a lot of time. And if you can install it yourself, you know, other than hiring someone to do it for you, you could save a lot of money because time is money. This part, the charging, I think anybody can really do this themselves with a little care. But if you did this process and you had some trouble, rest assured you could hire a professional to come in and charge it. And it won't cost all that terrible much because it's only gonna take a small amount of their time. But let's go into how to charge the system ourselves. In this video, we're gonna talk about what tools you need to do this project. We're gonna actually go through the process of putting gas in the system. Then once we get it all working, we're gonna spend some time talking to Dave and Kendra and see how it's working out for them. So here's what you need to charge a refrigeration system. You're going to need a gauge set. This is like the heart of anything refrigeration. Um, they're not terribly expensive nowadays. Buy one, buy one with two gauges, buy one that looks like this vaguely, but you'll know what I mean when you go shopping. There's gonna be, all of this stuff is going to be in an Amazon list down below. You can get to if you want your own. I recommend you get a good gauge set, not the minimum requirement because you can use this for your refrigeration as well as your air conditioner. And it's just a great tool to have. It's reasonably priced. Whenever you do a system from scratch, you need to have an evacuation pump. That's a vacuum pump that'll suck all the atmosphere out so you can start with an empty system and fill it up. You're gonna need some gas. I designed this air conditioner to use 134A. I uh, chose this because it's a good efficient one. It works fine. It's fairly benign on the environment, but most importantly, it's generally available. This is what they put in cars, so you can go to an auto parts store and just buy some. If you get these little cans, you need to get a little uh, adapter so that it can hook to your gauge set. And this is a valve, it pierces the can, and it ends in a quarter inch flare. If it doesn't end in a quarter inch flare, you either have to make an adapter or find one that does because the good gauge sets are all quarter flare. The automotive stuff isn't, so it gets a little confusing there. Okay, you're going to need a couple meters. You're gonna need an amp meter, and it's best if it's a clip-on DC amp meter. If you don't have one of these, they're so handy, you really should. Um, and this will measure the current that the compressor's using. You're going to want to adjust that current as you're going through by adjusting the speed of the compressor and keep it kind of in the realm of where you think you're gonna use it. If you're putting this in a great big space and pushing it hard, you're gonna to have to crank it up pretty good. Um, Dave and Kendra's space is reasonable, so we chose a number that was kind of in the more efficient side of things. I chose seven and a half amps. That's at 24 volts. So I clamped that onto the wire going into the computer that controls the, uh, the compressor, set it for DC amps, and just watch this number. As I installed gas, I had to slow down the compressor. And you'll see in the video, I forgot to do this. So, well, you'll see in the video. You're going to need a way of finding the temperature part of the system. There's a place where the quarter inch tubing leaves the condenser and there's a liquid refrigerant flowing at that point. It's important for the charging that we know the temperature of that liquid refrigerant. So some kind of a probe that can pick that up. These itty bitty little probes that go on meters are excellent. They react very, very quickly, but you could use an electronic kitchen thermometer. You would just have to maybe lash it on there with something and give it time to react because it's a bigger mass. It takes a little longer, but some way of doing that. By the way, um, this fluke meter is pretty tremendous and not very expensive. I'll be talking about this in a later video on electronics on a boat. Um, this is a buy. Finally, you need an app. Uh, you could do this without an app, but oh my God, when I found this app, I just threw away my script and did it based on the app. This is called Super Cool. It's free. You uh, just click on charge a unit, 
choose the TXV option, which is also the subcooling option, and your refrigerant type and such, and go to town. It just saves so much brain work because it just says, add more gas. Oh, you put too much in, take some away. It's as easy as that. Finally, hopefully you don't need anything like this, but if you weren't particularly careful during your installation and you have a leak in one of your flare fittings, this is a great tool. Uh, it's definitely in the should or could have, not in the must have section, but it's a sniffer that can smell the refrigerant. And you can put this little probe around, it's kind of like we're using a metal detector, it makes noises. And if you do have a leak, this will tell you where the leak is. If you don't have this, you can rent them. Um, but also you can, when the system is charged under positive pressure and leaking outward, you can use bubbly water, you know, soapy water, just like you would have with your bicycle inner tube when you were a little kid. Anyway, some way of looking for a leak can be handy, but hopefully you won't need this at all. That's what we need. Let's dive in now. Let's start charging the system. First thing we do, this is the gauge system. There's a low pressure side and a high pressure side. The low pressure is always blue and the high pressure is always red. You'll need a full gauge with both to do this process. Um, if there's a blue line and that's going to connect to the system on the low pressure side, a red for the high pressure side, and then another one that's usually yellow, and we're going to do various things for that. Right now it's hooked up to my vacuum pump. So let me hook these up. The low pressure side of your system, of course you're an expert now because you just installed this, but that's the size with, side with the bigger tubes. High pressure is the side with the smaller tube. That's the side that travels to the uh, condenser. And if you look at these little knobs where you were connecting here, that quarter inch flare with a Schrader valve, same thing that's in a bicycle tire. When you put this fitting on, it pushes that Schrader valve and opens up the uh, passage. So when you take the tube off, everything stays locked together. So when you take the hose off, it uh, seals right up immediately and uh, the system can be the way you need it long term. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do is remove all the gas in the system. It has air in it because you've been doing work. It also has water in it because there's water in the air, a tiny bit. And that humidity would cause problems for you in the future. So we're going to pump all of that out using this vacuum pump. You're going to see the needle go right down to negative 30, negative 32 um, inches of mercury. Uh, basically, vacuum as close as this pump can do it. I'm going to leave it that way for a good long time. I, I like to leave it like at least a half hour. Um, what's happening during that half hour, you think like, well, it's already there. It's not moving. Nothing's happening. Well, at that pressure, water boils at very low temperatures and the water is boiling into a gas and those gas molecules are running around but there's nothing to like push them out so it takes them a while to wander through the system and get pumped out so we want that system all nice and dry now if you didn't get every little bit that's okay because we have a good filter dryer and the filter dryer will dry that here we go <laughs> It's been a half an hour, so I've closed the valves down and I've um, shut off the pump. And then I started talking because you couldn't hear me with the pump. Uh, you want to watch this. Now this needle, give it a good amount of time. It shouldn't move. If it's moving down, that's either a leak with air going into your system or 
it is, um, there is some residual moisture and it's boiling and that will also kind of become a bigger volume and make the needle change. Uh, but it shouldn't move. Once it's not moving, you can put gas in. Now, if you do have a leak and you can't find it, you could put some gas in the system and either use that sniffer I talked about or bubbly water or just sometimes you can hear it and figure out where the leak is, address it and go back to this. But we're not gonna put gas in. So the next step is get a bottle of gas. I hope this works. <laughs> Put our fitting on and pierce the bottle of gas. And when you go all the way to the bottom on these little cans, that seals off. Hook it up to your manifold system. And in that process, everything's under vacuum, but this yellow hose I've let air into. We don't want air in our system. So I'm going to open up this valve, this uh, hose fitting right here on the manifold and let the can blow some gas past everything. Purge it. And now we're ready to put gas in the system properly. Uh, to start out with, just open both valves and let everything equalize. The can is boiling and gas is coming up. Hold the can right side up. Don't tip it upside down because the liquid would come out. We want just gas for this process. And uh, once it comes up and equalizes in pressure, then we'll turn on the compressor and go at it. Okay, once you have some gas in your system and the pressures have come up a bit, um, we're going to close off the high pressure side. And our gauge will still show us readings of what's on the high pressure side. And we'll, uh, but we won't be passing any gas through that tube. We can only add refrigerant on the low side and we can only do it while the compressor is running. The problem is it's going to be a little loud, so I'm going to talk through it first. So you start up the compressor, you open up the... Uh, the the valve to let uh, gas in through the low side, add some gas watching the pressure on the high side until it comes up with what the app says is the right amount. Then shut it all down and let it run for a while. A goodly long time, I don't know, 20 minutes. Let everything settle down and all the temperatures equal out to what they're gonna be. Then recheck it. You might have to make a more adjustment. Keep doing that until it dials in and you're not making a change and then it should be right and it should work. While you're actually adding refrigerant, while the valve is open, don't expect it to get cold. It's just kind of blowing air at that point. What's really happening physically is you're refrigerating the can and you'll notice it gets very cold. Uh, if you use small cans like this, um, when they get cold, they won't pass very much gas. You just have to wait till they warm up. You'll, you'll probably do what I do and like hug them with your hands and try to warm them up. That raises their pressure, so the process goes. Anyway, let's go at it. I'm going to turn on the compressor. And you'll see that I have a little gas in the system, but the low side pressure is coming down and the high side pressure is coming up. It's pumping gas through the system. Okay, my liquid line temperature is about 84 degrees. My pressure's coming up. It's now up to 100 PSI on the high pressure side. I'm gonna dial that in. Hit calculate and it says add refrigerant. Um, We've let it run a little longer. We're using the small bottles. If uh, you suddenly see nothing is changing, check. Maybe your bottle's empty. All right, we, uh, we just had a little funny thing happen. Circuit breaker blue. Uh, they sized for a circuit breaker they already have, which is fine for how they plan on using the air conditioner. But I'm just setting this one up and I had it turned like almost all the way up. So I've turned it down to a more reasonable speed where it uses a lot less power. Um, it's encouraging though, knowing it can be turned right up. 
So we got to kind of go back at it. And this is where we'll optimize it for and uh, have it be adjustable. So back to this. Since I've turned it down, the temperatures actually come down a lot on the condenser. We have 87 Fahrenheit. So I put that in my handy calculator and the pressure actually came down now. It's at, looks to me like 110 calculate and it still says add refrigerant. So we'll add a little more. I have no clue because I use a 30 pound container. I guess like two or three but it looks like it's just one. I mean, if your hoses were longer or bigger in diameter, it would be different. It's a big difference compared to the air that's blown in from outside. Yeah, well, even if it is the same temperature, if, if it pulled all the humidity out, and then you put that little fan on you and you're lying naked on your bed, your sweat is like, a, it's like being in Arizona. It's hot, but it works. And it's like, oh, <laughs> it's just... I don't know, it's, uh, it's magical and I think it's just like when I first built my first wind generator from scratch and I'm powering the whole boat around this like, I designed that! And it's, oh, it's so wonderful. Actually, slow it down a little bit. As I add more gas, there's more to compress. So it uses more electricity to do the job. but it pumps more cold. Mm -hmm. And you'll be playing around and adjusting and say, oh, we need more of this, less of this. It, David will love it. Because oh, yeah. there's, you know, if you just put all your power into blowing air, it really won't even feel terribly cold. I mean, it will cool the air really effectively, but you'll, you're wasting your energy up there. But if you run the compressor hard and don't, you're just pumping the cold back down into the ocean and you're kind of, Yep. <laughs> Except he gets three numbers to play with, theoretically. Compressor is drawing seven and a half amps at 24 volts. So you double that on a 12 volt system. A little thermal probe I'm hooking here on the liquid line and I get just about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Went up a little at the end because I touched it with my finger, but it was 87. So I put that in our little thing here. I uh, see that we are running at 120 PSI. So I dial that in, push calculate, and it says we are at 11 degrees of superheat. We're aiming for 10, but that's acceptable. I think that's acceptable. 11 is a perfectly good number. So next thing is just let the system run for quite a while. Let everything calm down. Uh, close down the room. Enjoy it. It's going to start getting cool in here. So let it run for a while and check it again and make sure it's all dialed in. Then you can just remove your hoses, closing off all your valves first, of course, so you don't lose gas. Remove your hoses, put the caps on, and you're done. You've got a working refrigeration. Things to think about, things to be, uh, to worry about when you're when you start this recharging system, make sure you have enough water flow. Now that actually affected us today. We didn't film at all because it was frustrating, but we started filming and the temperature right here went very, very high, much higher than we thought it should. Um, I started charging the system, but it just wasn't acting right. It turned out we had a very bad restriction in the water flow and we were only getting a very small amount of water flowing over the system. Make sure that you get like this much flow out of your system. Uh, look at the pump ratings. You should be right there where the pump is rated for. There's a pump rating sheet that came with your kit. Um, make sure you've got good water flow because it's the water that takes all the heat out of this room. And if it can't flow, you can't take the heat out, all the heat backs up in the system and the numbers start looking really weird. So the system is all charged and functional. Cold air is coming out of the air handler. Everybody's happy. 
We're going to give them a couple days to use it, and then we're going to get their response on, you know, how it's working for them. It's only going to be a couple days because there's a weather window coming, and that's precious in this part of the world. Uh, it's a nasty coast, and there's this great opportunity to move, so they're going to be taking it. Cool. We have an air conditioner. <laughs> We ran it overnight yesterday. Uh, it took a lot of the humidity out of the air, uh, just made you know, sleeping more comfortable uh, in drier air. It didn't draw very much power doing that. Um, it cycled on and off as we expected it to with the controller logic. Um, and in the morning, our batteries were still at 13.3, which is a average nominal voltage for us. So um, the amount of power that it used was pretty negligible. Um, this cabin's 300 cubic feet, and it didn't seem to have any problem with uh, cooling down the whole space if we gave it enough time. So yesterday it was probably about 80 degrees. I sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shut both doors to our cabin and closed all the windows, kind of blacked out our screens a little bit so the sun wasn't beating in, and started the air conditioner up, ran it for about an hour, and it definitely brought the temperature of the room down to a more comfortable level where you can just sit in here and putz around. It was surprising. It only took about an hour to notice the difference in temperature and humidity in the room. And we let it run for a couple of hours and then with all the doors closed, came back into the room and that's where you walk into that wall of cold that you're expecting. And it's not Arctic cold, but it is way more comfortable than what's outside. Yeah. So <laughs> it was... Yeah, it was just the uh, effect that we were hoping for. Going into the installation of this, I didn't really have any experience with uh, copper or refrigeration. Um, it was a new skill for me to learn, but honestly with you know, $50 worth of tools from Harbor Freight and uh, a little bit of do-it-yourself know-how. And reading. Uh, yeah, go on YouTube, watch a video. It's not hard at all. Um, you don't need... Uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist or an engineering degree to figure this out. It's pretty accessible to anybody who uh, has a little bit of hands-on working knowledge. Um, and watch Clark's video. He explains it all perfectly. If we ever do get into the situation where it's just so hot and humid that the machine can't keep up, we can cut the space of our aft cabin in half by curtaining off right in front of the bed and we've got our own little oasis back Cabana. here. <laughs> um, and we can definitely cool off that space as, as much as we need to be comfortable. So, yeah, the sky's the limit here. Our intentions are to keep cruising as long as we have the funds and as long as it's fun. And this unit is going to greatly add to our enjoyment moving forward and help us really appreciate what we're doing out here and not have to sacrifice on the most important part, which is comfort <laughs> that's the first production system i've installed it i think it's working great so with a couple little modifications i bless this and the manufacturer will start making them available we don't have a web page up quite yet it'll be up very soon come back to any of these videos check in the description and when it's up it'll be there if you put yourself on the survey um you'll get an email when the website is up and you can order now, patrons are going to be served first, and we have a lot of patrons that are interested, so they're going to be served out of the first batch, but eventually we're going to have thousands of these, and you'll all be able to buy one, hopefully before the summer heat starts. If you enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. That tells YouTube this is worthwhile. Please, if you've got some friends that might want air conditioning on their boat, pass this series around. Take a look at it, see if it looks like something that you would want on your boat or could install yourself. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Bye. But uh, thank you for, uh, well, for uh, using our, our boat as the installation. We really do appreciate the, just the fact that we will have it. And um, thanks for you know, sharing, sharing all this with the world. I think that'll be a very, uh, yeah, well. I don't know what else to say about yeah, that. Well, well, making the world a place. I just noticed Emily was filming and <laughs> I froze up. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're watching this video later, because you know you just got your unit and did the install, uh, I know I would watch this again just before doing the install. Uh, tell me in the comments how it went.
Tell me how it's working out for you. Tell me uh, whatever you'd like to tell me. I always read all the comments.